the theme of talks at Columbia is learning for life. And at the School of Professional Studies, we're all about lifelong learning. What do you do to continue to develop yourself as a leader, as a role model, as a motivator, as a recruiter, as, <laughs> a, as a winner? <laughs> as a, yeah, all of the above, yeah. A continual growth process. Uh, for me, it's surrounding myself with, with great people whenever I can. I, you know, one of the first things I did when I got hired was sit with this man. <laughs> and, um, you know, and we had a, every year I go up in May and sit with Coach Bagnoli and, and just at pick his brain about what did you do to, to get where you are. And, um, you know, and I've had a lot of talks with Jim about, you know, like, you know, for him, same thing. He's been coaching way longer than I have. You know, like everybody has a nugget for me. And, you know, Michael Offertig, who's our fencing coach, national champions, like, you know, I sit down with him. And so that's just using the network within what we have. But, also on a greater scheme of, and scale of that is making sure that when I just have an ear to the street all the time with recruiting, I think recruiting is absolutely the most important thing that I can be doing right now mm -hmm. is, is bringing in the people that can help us build this culture while talking about a championship culture. And so for me, it's um, making sure that nothing, no net is cast shallow, like <laughs> Coach Bagnoli was talking about. And, you know, we're making sure that we're covering all of our bases and we have dynamic people on staff that are making me and us better. You know, we can't hire people that are, you know, like we're just making the decisions for them. To me, it's that we need people around us that are just going to make us better every day. So surrounding yourself with, you know, people like that. Um, and I think that goes hand in hand with your recruits. You want people like your non-negotiables. They're going to have those. They're going to value those things. So there's those things, you know, and then whenever just sniffing out opportunities to learn the game, grow the game, going to clinics, uh, when I'm on the road, making sure that I'm meeting with other coaches, going to workouts, doing different things like that. So. Um, and reading a ton. I think that's something we can all do <laughs> in, in how, whenever we can. So that's big for us. That's good. Jim, the opposite side for you, you have been coaching for a long time. You have a wealth of experience um, winning, um, succeeding, losing. You've done it all. What kind, not much losing though, so maybe you can't advise too much. Uh, what kind of mentoring uh, do you do? What are the hallmarks of your mentoring philosophy when you mentor people like Megan and other coaches who don't have as much experience? Uh, how do you frame that relationship? You know, I'll piggyback off of what Megan said. I think, you know, you do have a circle of advisors or a board of directors, um, people that you have to count on because um, coaching is not just basketball. You know, there's a lot of things that, you know, as a basketball coach, it's not just, you know, X's and O's. And um, when I got into the, uh, basketball, is something I always wanted to do yeah. uh, when I was little. You know, it's very rare that when you're, like, I guess when you're five years old, someone wants to be an astronaut or yeah. someone wants to be a fireman. I mean, very rarely do you do exactly what you wanted to do when you were five years old. So I got really lucky and blessed to be able to do this. Yeah. And I think that type of enthusiasm, you have to carry that with you. So I've been yeah. doing a Division One basketball now for 31 years now, I think. And I think you have to carry that, that newness to you all the time. So all the stuff that Megan talks about is exactly what I feel like Megan. Um, you know, Megan's you know, a new head coach. She's been a head coach now since so her third year. And I think a lot of times you have to feel like you're a new head coach because you have to continue to push yourself and learn. And, and you have to use, I think the one thing that I've been lucky with the years that I've been doing this is that I have a bunch of people that I can call when I'm having some issues that can help me and give me some different ideas about how you're supposed to uh, you know, look at certain circumstances.